Hi everybody and welcome back to Rich Reviews. Okay, so you join us back at home now. We've collected the BLRO, the Pepsi, the GMT2 Pepsi, and I'm just gonna do a quick unboxing for you. I'm sure some of you have seen the GMT2 BLRO before. Now this is the 1267 BLRO GMT2. GMT2. And there, as you can see, it's the ceramic bezeled BLRO with the Jubilee strap. And the bezel is, um, the bezel is named, or the, the, the type of material that um, Rolex call this bezel is uh, Cerachrome, because of the actual design. Now I talked a lot about the actual design of the GMT2, the actual history of the GMT2 and the design of GMT2 um, some time ago when I did my review of the BL, BLNR, the Batman, the 1167 BLNR. Um, so if you want to check some more details about the history, please look below, but I'll give you a brief overview of the history. So the GMT-2 was developed in, in allegiance or in alignment with Pan Am. Pan Am requested Rolex if they could provide a watch that dealt with two time zones um, because their pilots were crossing time zones with the advent of, um, of longer distance traveling. And so the, in 1954, Pan Am version of the GMT, it wasn't the GMT-2 then, of course, the Pan Am version of the GMT was born and the, the model version was called the 6542 and that was released in 1954. Now the first versions um, had the bezel were Bakelite. That's the material that they used for the bezel. Obviously Bakelite, if you know these sorts of materials, I remember it from back in the day. Um, Bakelite is very brittle. So they changed the actual material to aluminium. 
um, and so the bezel was actually changed uh, was changed to aluminium in 1956 um, and then it, because of the wear and tear that aluminium took it faded a lot etc they then decided to change the actual bezel design in 2018 to uh, the ceramic version and um, and yeah and this is the ceramic version so the first version of the GMT was actually named the Pussy Galore and the reason it was named the Pussy Galore was because it was actually worn by Honor Blackman in the film Goldfinger. Now there was 200 special edition versions that were actually made for Pan Am executives that had white dials. These have sort of fallen into, fallen into obscurity, um, not many people seem to have actually noticed them or seen them. But nonetheless they were actually made, 200 special editions were made for the Pan Am executives. And um, as I say, they were known because they actually the dials were white as opposed to being black in this instance. Now, the Cerachrome version, in other words, the ceramic version of this bezel, was developed or was released in 2018. The first version that was released was the BLNR, the, the um, blue and black. That was because the colors were easier to make because they overlaid the black over the blue. So they put the whole bezel in blue, in ceramic blue, and then they overlaid black over the top because obviously black overwrote the blue. The problems they had with, with the red and blue were obviously they could have put the, the lighter color, red, all the way around, and then they put blue on top. But the trouble is you get a bit of a purple color then. And when they first initially released the ceramic versions of this watch in 2018, they had issues um, with the colouring um, and there's actually three versions of this type of bezel and this is the last version, the later version so it actually has a more, has a truer colour if you look at the colours, the, the blue and the red are truer colours whereas in the first iteration of, of this ceramic version of the Pepsi the blue was very purpley now each version of this, of this watch, each, each version of the colouring has its place and some people prefer the first version, some people prefer the second, some people prefer this version. Pretty much most people get what they're given because these are so hard to get hold of. Um, you just cannot get hold of them from an authorised dealer. You can't walk into an authorised dealer and get any sports Rolex watches, but you certainly can't get hold of this. This is very sought after. This was a two year wait for me from my authorised dealer. My authorised dealer looked after me and I have spent a fair amount of money with my authorised dealer. But nonetheless, it was still a two year wait. Now, the, the movement that was issued in the, in the first iteration of this Cerachrome version, of this ceramic version of the Pepsi was actually the 3285. Now the earlier versions of the ceramic watches, which were uh, the BLNR was the first iteration of the, with the ceramic bezel, that had the 3186 movement. Now the 3285 movement has a higher power reserve and um, is actually more securely shock absorbed as well. So it deals with um, the shock absorbing is a lot better. But uh, this was released with the 3285 movement, which is the upgraded movement. And the key Advancement is the 72 hour power reserve as opposed to the 3186 movement which had the um, 48 hour power reserve but it's always had the 3285 movement this particular instance of the GMT2. This is actually brand new, unworn. It's been in the safe since I bought it. Brand new from the authorised dealer. Just holding it up there. Now, the BLNR, the Batman watch, used to be provided on the Oyster bracelet up until 2019. So my version of the Batman had the Oyster bracelet. And then in 20, in later in 2019, it was released um, with the Jubilee bracelet and the movement was up, updated from the 3186 to the 3285 on the Batman. Obviously this is the BLRO. Now, I actually prefer, and this is gonna be this is going to maybe cause a bit of controversy across the uh, watch fraternity. I actually prefer the Oyster bracelet. Um, I don't like the Jubilee bracelet. This is the first watch I've had with the Jubilee bracelet and it, it does actually adhere to your wrist a lot better. And it is, a, say, a better fitting bracelet than the, than the Oyster bracelet because it's got a lot more link. So it's got more flex, a lot more flexibility in it, as you can see there. But it just feels flimsy. The bracelet just feels flimsy, it just doesn't feel anywhere near as well engineered as the Oyster bracelet. So I actually prefer the Oyster bracelet. But I'm just going to take off my, I've got my um, Daytona at the moment. Interestingly enough, this bracelet didn't need any sizing at all. It was, um, it was the right size, so the, so the sizing on the bracelet, the bracelets must be, quite, must be slightly smaller. It's a lot easier if I hold it upside down. 
there's no doubt about it, it's, it's a very beautiful watch. Um, the ceramic bezel really makes it. And with regards to the actual GMT2 version, if I did a comparison between this and, and the BLNR, the, um, the blue and black version of the bezel, I actually prefer this version. It's, it's, um, it just really brightens up the watch. Um, the blue and black version is, is, um, is not, so, not so much a dress watch. This, is, this sort of does bridge into being a, a dress watch, especially with the Jubilee bracelet. But like I said, the Jubilee bracelet feels quite flimsy in comparison to the Oyster bracelet. Maybe I'll get used to it, but, um, but yeah, I do prefer the Oyster bracelet. With regards to the hands on the GMT2 and how GMTs work in general, the actual our, our hand is changeable separately. So if you pull the crown out, you can actually adjust the hour hand separately. So you can actually change that to the separate time zone. So it makes it a lot easier when you're moving an hour forward and an hour back. You literally just have to pull the hand out. You don't, it doesn't stop the seconds running and it doesn't alter the seconds. So you don't have to reset the time if you're gonna set the time accurately on the seconds. You just move the actual hand to where you want it to be um, you know, if you're moving into a different time zone. So, so the normal hour hand and the minutes hand they actually provide the actual time zone for where you are at your particular time. And the actual 24 hour GMT hand, which is in red here, that actually provides the hour um, and, and relational to the actual minutes hand, the time for your native hometown. So if I say, if I move to America, if I flew to America for a holiday, then the 24 hour GMT, GMT hand would stay in relation to my UK time zone and the actual hour hand would move to actual American time. And you can use the bezel as well. The bezel moves both ways. You can actually use the bezel to set a third time zone if you wanted to. So, so there, so guys, so um, hope you enjoyed that brief review of the GMT2 BLRO, the 1267 BLRO, no, um, commonly known as the Pepsi. So it's a new watch to me. The first thing I'm gonna do is put on my bracelet protector. So I put a bit of what I call, what's, what I, not what I call, so I put a bit of bike tape on there um, to protect the actual clasp and to prevent it from being scratched. And it's pretty much invisible to bike tape. It's a little bit worn on my, on my Daytona, but you can see there, the bike tape that I use there on the Daytona to actually protect it. It prevents it from getting scratched or excessively scratched. And this is uh, my Daytona is worn extensively. And if you wanted to see a review about the Daytona, then please look below in the, in the watches playlist section, you'll see a review on this beautiful Daytona with the Black Mother of Pearl Tahitian dial. So that's the end of the review. If you want some more details, then please drop some comments in the message below and drop some questions in there and I'm happy to answer all your questions. I always get back to all the comments. We're looking to grow the channel and we want to, we have a target set to actually have 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you're not subscribed, please think about subscribe. And if you like the video, please select like and please share the video among your friends as well and among your colleagues. Um, please select all for notifications so you receive notifications of all future incoming videos. If you're interested in the in the 458 material and if you're wondering where the 458 material is, well, the car's currently stored in the garage. We are going to be providing some footage on the upgrade to the, to the garage door when the garage door is converted over to a sectional door. And we will be providing a lot more content very soon. In approximately a month time, we're hoping and looking at the weather, it looks like the weather is going to improve. So we'll be able to get the 458 out of the garage and we'll do a first drive and we'll really start producing a lot of content on my ownership of the, of the Ferrari 458. So great, fantastic content to come, supercar content to come. We're also looking at doing some, soon doing some reviews of various other Ferraris and various other cars as well. Um, so please make sure you subscribe so you receive notifications of those incoming videos. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.